Hello, and welcome back to Wednesday Wisdom with Amanda and Garrett and myself. Today, we are going to touch on the current affairs of our planet just a little bit. And then we're going to talk about random acts of kindness, how to stay balanced in today's chaos. And help me, Amanda. And how to basically, um, we'll say, maneuver through those times too. Okay, thank you. <laughs> because I totally in your, went. Yeah, in your in your best way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, good. We're gonna start with real quick. I want to mention the meteors that um, literally made a big boom in Pittsburgh on New Year's Day. There were two of them, apparently. Um, I think that's very interesting, considering that I have always felt that we're in a binary star system and that that's going to be part of the catalyst for this micronova solar event that's supposed to happen. And um, one of the things that I've been watching for, not only like on uh, Planet X News YouTube channel, that guy that watches the sun all the time, for little celestial bodies coming in around the sun. Um, well, I knew that we should also be watching for like a solar, a mini solar system type thing to come through with it, which would include extra meteors and include um, asteroids and moons and satellites and so forth, right? That would be out in front of it, that would come near us first. And um, so I pay a lot of attention to the amount of meteors that we have in between our regular meteor showers and such. And I find these two particular meteors that landed on New Year's quite interesting because they were quite large. The boom was the equivalent of a half ton of TNT. I mean, that's pretty impressive. You know, how did that get into our stratosphere and stuff without burning up, right? You know, I think that's pretty interesting. They, I think personally, I haven't looked at the data yet, but my intuition says that these came from near the sun from that little mini solar system because they definitely weren't planned meteor shower kind of stuff. So I just want to make note of that because I find that very interesting. And then also the Schumann resonance has been offline for the last couple of days. I think it was like 21 hours straight. And um, so that would, you know, the meteor landing would have possibly affected that. And also as well, I really feel like, and we've talked about this, but I want to mention it to our audience. I really feel like just since New Year's, there's this huge increase in energy. Like I've just been jazzed, right? Like I'm just like, Duh! all the time you know like I took a handful of b12 or something <laughs> I'm just like yay yeah exactly <laughs> so, so I think that had something to do with the Schumann resonance going offline exactly because they, right. it, yeah because they didn't want us, everybody to see that they know now that we're watching right they're smart enough to know that we're watching stuff like that and they didn't want us to actually be able to visually witness that big burst of energy that kicked off on New Year's. That's my opinion of it. Right. Explain explain to the audience though what uh, the Schumann residence is, just in case there's people out there that okay, um, right. Like, my so, brother didn't even know what that was. Right. He's what? right. That's a good point. So the Schumann residence actually measures the Earth's frequency, the Earth's vibration, which is usually somewhere around I think it's like seven hertz. Right, Garrett? Am I correct in that? It's like around normal is seven hertz. But it's been on an increase and kind of leveled out to where it sort of stays at around 14 to 17, somewhere in there now. And that is because it's, well, it's multifactored, really. The um, binary star coming near to our sun is causing the sun to be more energized. That is sending more energy toward the planet. The planet itself then is becoming more energized, but all of us are also becoming more energized and waking up 
and in the waking up and understanding who we are and what we can do, there are many people now that are called light workers that are actually putting the intention out there for the energy to be raised for the humans, the planet, the, the animals, everything. We're raising the vibration in doing that. And so we watch the spikes, the ebbs and flows on the Schumann resonance to see how, like how many, how well, you know, progress, because every time it's big spikes, we're like, yes, you know, that was us. So we're really excited about it. And it, and it's been spiking and spiking and spiking and doing these really crazy wonky things where you've got like blacked out lines in it that we've never seen before. The scientists can't explain, you know, and we laugh about it because we know that's us. We know that's us. So that's what the shooting presence is. Right. Yes. Agreed. Okay. Here's a quick picture of oh. So these are when those resonances yes. come in really strong. Yes. Light. This Isn't would be that, like a normal set. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> they have time stamps and everything yeah. as for when they come in so you can track it that way. So I love that really big white area because that means we were all on for a really long time. <laughs> and was that recent, Garrett? No, right? That was just an image I pulled up for an ex yeah. example. But I'm going to guess that one is a more recent one in the last I, months or so. Yeah. I just, I just want to say that that is like a visual to that song that I sing to my kids that's so real this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> like that's a perfect yeah. visual for how big we're shining, right? No. <laughs> I just want to put that in. Okay, so Amanda's going to share with us about the Colorado fires and some other earth changes she's become aware of. Yeah, so I, I live here in Colorado. Um, I was very fortunate to be um, not involved in the, any of the fires, uh, but I had um, a lot of six degree connections through, through that though. And so it was very devastating out here, um, but there's a lot of people helping out and um, I think Colorado is going to recover quite well with the good people out here taking care of everybody. But there were mild, like, <laughs> I, I'm glad that I was not out in this because I'm a very tiny person. So I, I, I think I would have became a human, you know, balloon uh, because the actual winds were um, going about 120 miles an hour. So um, that's crazy, it, you know, just, just, yeah. And there was, it was four different parts of reasons why the fire started. Um, so you know, blowing over electrical, starting fire. That's like one of them and a couple more man-made. So, um, and then we've had some snow come in uh, in the last, I wanna say four or five hours um, and, and every hour out towards where those fires were out west towards the mountains, they were um, about four inches an hour of the snow that was coming down. Wow. So there, there's, yeah, but That's Colorado actually, has been very dry. That's a blessing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, this should um, help like basically contain the fires now, you know? So we're very blessed for that part. Um, I do know there was some activity going on out in Utah. Um, it was, uh, I, I really like this guy. It's Mr. NBB. 333 uh, live yeah. stream. You can check him out. He, he gives you great information. Um, you can also send in footages as well uh, through emails. He does personally get back to you in each of the emails, but uh, he had some great stuff going on. There were, unfortunately, with everything going on across around the United States, there were a lot of outages. Uh, yeah. A lot of outages. Here, too. Um, Here in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was talking about that out there. What the? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, he broke that down a little bit of some adages going on through there, but basically, um, you know, at, we'll get through this information, right, and give you the news and all that update and stuff, but we'll get back to what you would do during these times, right, and how you should be preparing. We should have right. already been preparing, <laughs> right, we've been through this right. before, but um, yes, so that's a little bit about what's going on in um, my, my news world for you guys. Right. Did they ever figure out what caused the power outages? Um, you know, from around, from Colorado, obviously it was the fires, right? Uh, then I want to say it's been wind. Uh, my, my, I have a family that lives out my, in uh, Mesquite and it was like 27 degrees, not to like just the other day. That's really cold for Mesquite, Nevada. So, yeah. uh, there's, there's, there's different weather changes going on that, you know, yeah. California, right. Yeah. Um, stuff going on around there. So it is definitely Oregon. Um, there was some stuff out that way too, with, um, the winds as well. So it seems like it's just circulating around right now. Or yes. Yeah. Definitely. Here in Indiana, even, it, it's been the strangest weather lately. Um, the whole week of Christmas, it was 72 degrees. Like, what? 70? I mean, like, I have daisies growing in my front yard. I'm not kidding you. 72 degrees for a whole week. And then all of a sudden, it went from 72 to 27. Just like that. And crazy wind. Like it's been so windy here. I don't, I don't get it. It's got to be weather manipulation or something. I don't get it. You know, <laughs> Garrett, what were you going to um, add to this? Yeah. Well, uh, I was thinking. I'm still kind of back on the Pittsburgh thing too. My mind works in different energy flows, but um, as far as the weather currently. Um, I know that Colorado is a major point. Some some area in Colorado, I think I don't know if it was the MMB three guy that you mentioned earlier. Um, there's a they use a lot of weather control. They've been doing it for a long time, and they use that region and the mountains in order to propel or to get different wind currents as well. So they use take advantage of the situation already involved. I think. So part of that is creating all of these storms to come across the Midwest and Southern and up into the North. So I think they're on purpose causing all of these storms, whether it's the white hats, the black hats or whoever's doing it, we don't ultimately yeah. know, you know, the purpose for it. Um, and then uh, I was curious if you didn't mind the uh, Pittsburgh thing, did it say where the meteors hit? Um, yeah. Any information? I, have it I think that's that. pertinent. Yeah, I have it on my phone. Let me pull it back up. My phone went to sleep. And my only oh, reason my for question, bringing it up. 30 tons of TNT, not a half ton, 30 tons. Right. Wow. And I haven't heard anything about that so the fact that if that's that much tnt hitting the earth then we haven't heard anything about it like i hadn't heard anything until you just mentioned it yeah he also it said, said something 100 about, um it says it was a hundred times the brightness of a full moon and this is from nasa this information well cnn reported it but you know but but now Na it's nasa's statement Mm -hmm. So my first response is, is that rods of God or one of those <laughs> types of technologies? Yeah, because yeah, that's that pretty the start cool. of that. Is yeah. That, you know, yeah. It was a ballpark sized used, object. And where did it hit? Because something that big would have affected. Allegheny right? County. In the South Hills. Hmm. Of Allegheny County. Allegheny County. 
<laughs> What's the nearest city? Do you know by chance? There's probably no map, but <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot. I was just curious. <laughs> uh... Because even just pulling up and searching for it, nothing pops up for me hardly. So that's. It says the suburb of South Hills. I don't, I mean, that's all I have. I don't know. Hmm. In Allegheny County, Pittsburgh. Okay, so it wasn't the size of a ballpark. Yeah, he ballpark figure i should have read better um that it's about a yard in diameter okay so that's not as bad yeah with a math with a mass close to half a ton that's i knew i read that earlier so what's this up here about the 30 tons hmm. maybe it broke off from one that was 30 tons, who knows? Yeah, like it, yeah. yeah, asteroid kind of. Yeah, that's how big it was originally, that if it would have hit full size, it would have been the equivalent of 30 tons of TNT. It exploded in the atmosphere at that though. Mm -hmm. And then the part that hit the earth was a half ton. But still, you would think that stuff. You definitely would like think that that would be making some big, noise, right? Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. So yeah. if this is accurate, this picture it says uh, exploding meteor that rattled Pittsburgh released energy. That's, that's it. just off of images that I. Saw. That don't, we don't know for sure if that's it. That don't look like much. <laughs> I don't know. Or is that misinterpreted? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not trusting that shit. So, next. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks I'll for quit sharing. Researching. I'm not trying to diss you or anything. I appreciate you sharing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, something. I think my ego was more in shock that I didn't know about it yet. <laughs> Say right? that again, Garrett. I said, I think my ego was in shock that I didn't know about it if it was that big. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would be ashamed of me if I didn't know too about something that big. I mean, I was like <laughs> literally reading it thinking, why did why the did I not know it was this big? <laughs> you know. And then I realized I was wrong, thankfully. Because I'm usually pretty good about staying on top of that stuff. But yeah, I mean that was that was crazy. And what was the deal with California, Amanda? You were saying something about California earlier to me. Paradise. No, 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 it it wasn't California. Oh no. I didn't get to hear too much of the California. It was um Lake Erie. Erie, yeah. And they yeah. had had, yeah, he'd had they had had like a couple of um earthquakes. Yeah, that's close like to me. Earthquakes happening that's out there. That's the new Madrid fault line, dude. Yeah. That's the sleeping giants. A lot yeah. of these earthquakes, when you track them, they're uh they're certain distances down and they're all about yeah. the same distance roughly and they're usually a nine or ten and they resonate the same amount so that's pretty much indication of them going to the underground bases and they're either destroying them or Influence. whatever they're doing down there they could still be in you know getting people out of there and or good guys yeah. or bad guys or, you know so well, a lot of the lolos are just part of the tunnel system of the underground system yeah and well if you track where they are I hope that's all it is. Yeah. I do. I really do hope that's what it is um, to, for twofold reasons. And if that is what it is, I'm just going to make my public statement right now. They need to not be blasted so much around here because we're like a bunch of limestone and sand rock kind of stuff, you know? And yeah. like uh, California's 7.9. We get that same effect with a 6.4 here. So y'all need to take it easy. We got a lot of caves yeah, underneath and my that, ass. I don't want to be falling in. <laughs> yeah. 
right? Well, and then yeah. there was something going on, of course, poor Louisiana, you know, Louisiana too, as well, right? Like Louisiana, and, and that probably just happens from like the wind and the water that we're talking about, right? And yeah. well, oh, was it, it white up, or so. something else? Was it a what? An, an earthquake or was it something else? No, they were, no, he was saying just to, just to watch. Like that was just the advice because the weather is just going it's oh, moving wow. so fast, right? Okay. And and these are just key points of like different states that were, were to just be watched right. basically, right? With, with weather warnings that were coming up from what's going on right now. Right. So, yeah. And that's a and I think they're working with different gateways as well. Mm -hmm. Portals, gateways. The original ones were just messed up or destroyed. They'd fallen. So now there's a lot of wormholes and things like that going on. So the whole idea that they took CERN out and what they were doing with that and, and how that's kind of what they're working on at a very bigger, a higher level as well, you know, as just the three-dimensional you know, get the cabal out of here kind of thing. So the, the different levels of, of things. So they, they stopped CERN? Because I didn't know that. That's new to me. Yes, CERN's officially been Awesome. Stopped. Awesome. Good guys have control of it. Yep. Great. That's very good to know. Yeah. We don't need no more black holes. Bunch of dumbass. No. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, that was a perfect place for us to go into our next phase of conversation, talking about things we can do to prepare and, you know, kind of prepper style survival stuff um, for these kind of incidents when they happen near, near you. Yeah. Yeah, like we, I, I, you know, <laughs> really until this last time, I've never put a survival kit really together. It was kind of like, uh, whatever, right? I'll just do it when it's when it's time. Um, You're so cute. I put one together now, <laughs> so <laughs> I learned my lesson from from my friends coming over here, right? So I would do that. Candles, <laughs> candles are my one of my favorites. We have one on our Telegram. Right, you have that with the with the um, uh, the cast. What is it? The the lard fat, right? And you can use the grease, and you can turn that into for a candle. Um, you you can explain it much better than I can. But there's there's that that going on. Plus dry goods, right? Have stored water. Probably don't keep it in your garage if it's gonna be cold. If you don't, you know, so it's not frozen. If you need to drink the water. Um, have extra blankets, layers, right? Like there's all these different things that we just want to prepare and don't overtake what you need to as well when you go to the store. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. another thing. Don't, don't be a greedy bastard at the store. Yes. It's Think about okay. everybody else that needs to survive too and they need to wipe their yeah. butt. Don't take all the toilet yes. paper again. I was so mad over that. Like I had friends that did that and I was so mad at them. I, I lectured them like I was their mama. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, and then to take it and then to like, they used to do this a lot when we were young, <coughs> you know, or I guess when the internet got kind of out more, it was toys or whatever, right? They would take toys and then buy them all out and then resell them and oh, make yeah. money off of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. People were doing that too. Don't do that. That's bad karma too. You know, that's just not, it's not all right. Yeah. So there's a, there's the reason why that there's, you know, take two <laughs> and yeah. you can go back a next week or something and take two more when they restock or something. Yeah. Right? Like but, even, even in the grocery store, still live like the Native Americans that go by their principles. Don't take more than you need. <laughs> whether it's from the earth or the store don't take more than you need yes Garrett what would you say for like well, I think thought? I think to bring 
because a lot of us are living in that, oh, when it happens, then I'll think about it mentality. Yeah. But I would encourage people to go and search Paradise California fires and learn because a lot of people posted a lot of videos of what it was really like to be driving where they can't see anything from but fire completely surrounding them. They're driving through the fire to try to get out of it and just put yourself in that place and realize a lot of that kind of stuff could be coming our way. We don't know if it is or not. We don't know at what level, but just being aware that, wow, and stepping out of our comfort zones, you know? Um, so researching that, researching what the experience and the vastness of what really happened in Colorado, 600 homes going up in flames in less than, I don't know how many hours it was. That's scary. Like that, that's, that's big stuff, you know? So not allowing it to, to be scary, but just, Hey, let's be prepared for it just in case, you know, but take some time to really go in and see what else is going on. So you might know what to expect. So you can plan your survival kits or whatever you, you might need in there like pliers with knives and stuff like that matches for fires and stuff, you know, um, definitely look at that and just put yourself in that position of what it would be like to be going through what they're going through. And I think that's a huge way to connect ourselves. The other thing is you said your friend came to you and you got to bring them in and help them. And so as dramatic and drastic as this can be and scary, that's when humanity comes together. And I think that's what a lot of this is designed for is that's when we see the importance and the value of what life is. So just to really encompass, you know, who can I help? Who, who, who can I talk to in my community and be like, Hey, let's just have a heads up for each other. You know, if this and this happens, you know, talk to your people in your surroundings and, and uh, just have that perspective in it, I guess. I'll go ahead and leave that yeah. there. It, it's <laughs> yeah. like, I had both, I had both scenarios, right? I had the couple that, that the married couple that came that literally, um, you know, it, it was like midnight or something when she went to bed and just praying, they just prayed like her, her you know, their apartments buildings would be okay. It was a half a mile it stopped right before, right? Um, and then the next day I have a neighbor that's a flight attendant, right? And then she needs clothes because this lady lost everything, right? So I had both sides of that and to tell you the truth like I don't want to be in the fire to learn my lesson so yeah you know these yeah. these helping these people out help me learn my lesson and to not just you know fly by the seat of my pants I like to do that a lot but those are not the cases the times that we should be doing that right yeah. we should right. be prepared yeah and also um, a good point to make here is that because you are prepared for your own emergency and you didn't have an emergency, but someone else needed to come to be with you, you had extra to share with them, you know, so um, keep maybe keep that in mind, too, that it might not be your home, the viewer I'm speaking to, of course, it may not be your home that's directly affected, but you know, what if your neighbor next door, the tornado hits their house or the fire got them, right? Then you have some that you can share and not be making your own family do without and still, you know, being able to help your fellow neighbor. I guess I'm the only one. You froze up for a second. She's back. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Speak of that, that's because of the weather going on right now. Okay. Right? So. <laughs> so, so I think of maybe what are the potential going forward, you know? And like if 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 you're a Q follower and you follow what that is and the information coming from a lot of those sources, the indication is that there could be more things like these meteors hitting if they are rods of god or if they are really what they're telling us they are depending on what media outlet you're getting it from so there is rumor that like 34 buildings might go down so if they're going to use rods of god in order to do that they're actually taking out corrupt bases that have been used for ritualistic events we'll just leave it there then some of those are going to be around where we live. You know what I mean? So, so just 
being aware that the potential could be there, there's no definitive in it. So that's your own thing to resonate with, whether it is your own truth, your own research, your own thing that you do. So I definitely encourage you to do your own research in that, you know, and not just take our, our value word. from what someone tells you, you know. <laughs> so yeah. if you've done it long enough, you learn how to do it and you understand and your your own intuition definitely learns to resonate to the truth. So um, yeah. I think it's important to share that whether, you know, that was our topic of the night or not, but I think it's a good perspective. Yes. It, and it, if you have more questions about stuff, feel free to ask us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're always here to help you learn more. So if you've got anything that you need to understand better, feel free to ask. Um, so some simple ways for city folk, you know, that's not a derogatory term. I'm just like simplifying it for y'all. <laughs> some simple ways <laughs> to prepare would be like save your milk jug or your milk carton, rinse it out really good, put some water in it, put it under your cabinet, stick it in a closet, whatever, like have three, six jugs of water per person in your house, right? That's a good, that's a good amount of water to have because you will really be surprised how daggone much water you actually use in a day. I mean, you just don't realize until it's gone. And then you're just like, oh my God, I need water for this. Oh my God, I need water for that too. What am I going to do? I don't have water. So, you know, be that really smart person and have your water in the closet or wherever, in your milk jugs. Who cares what they say? Don't let nobody talk you down. Store your water. That's important. Um, also, having a can of charcoal or charcoal tablets on hand is really great if you need to purify your water to be able to drink it. It's really, really important to have that charcoal. That's quick fix. It's, it's a great way to clean your water. You can get all kinds of contaminants out of it, like literally a coffee filter and a, and a charcoal tablet, and you're set. You know, you can purify any water. So that's a really good one to have around. Um, like Garrett was saying, matches are a good thing, but I always recommend that you either put them in like a Ziploc bag that's waterproof or like in jars, right? I have my, look, mine are called carrot stick matches. Aren't they cute? They're like a brownish orange and they have a striker. They have a striker on them. I love my little jar of matches. And I'm a, I'm like the for real kind of prepper. I got the bug out bags and whole deal, right? <laughs> I got the serious stuff, yes. <laughs> but because <laughs> I'm gonna go full country on y'all if something happens. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. I country girl can survive now, but yeah, some simple things would be the matches. Um, I love to tell people to keep tampons in your bug out bag, tampons, and some cheap little candle, some kind of cheap candle. Like I have these, I have these emergency candles. <laughs> I'm like showing y'all all my stuff. I have these emergency candles. They're like a buck a piece at the dollar store, right? It's just paraffin and a wick. That's all it is, but it's a slow burning kind of candle. But if you got them tampons and you need to make a fire, you light this candle with your waterproof bag of matches and you let some of that candle wax melt onto your tampon cotton. And then you put that sucker, you spread it apart and put it in a little fire with a tiny bit of kindling and some leaves and bam, you got a fire in minutes. Like it's brilliant and cheap. It's cheap. And everybody's going to need fire. <laughs> huh? What, Garrett? You can use them as bandages as well in case yes. you get injured. Or That's hurt. right. Yeah. That's right. If you've got like a puncture wound, you can shove that sucker right in there. It'll keep you from bleeding to death. You sure will. Bloody nose. Bloody nose. Well, yeah, you got to strip it down a bit to fit it in the nostril, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got big nose. Hope nobody yanks your I, I wouldn't go on a dating site after that. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, don't even get me started about that kind of business. There's some crazy looking people on them sites. 
but no, some other good ones um, would be, like Amanda said, the blanket. Of course, blankets are always good. Um, if you want to really seriously prepare for disasters, mylar blankets are great because they hold your body heat in. And they're very, very, they look like thin foil and they're folded up in this tiny little square in a pouch. And you're like, that's a blanket. And then you pull it out and you start unfolding it. This is great big mylar blanket. It's really amazing. <laughs> so for bad situations, the mylar blanket is good. Um, what are some other things? Canned goods, dry beans. Um, if you want to really get serious about storing and preparing, get you some small drums to store your flour and dry goods and stuff and keep the bugs out of it, right? You don't want no weevils and stuff in your business. So get something that's got a good sealed lid on it or really good Ziploc bags and, you know, stick them in a tote bag, put a lid on it, something like that. One thing that I learned too was if you was a, uh, your birth certificate, right? Like all of that important stuff. Yes. You probably have and get to where, you know, if there are some personal pictures, right? From baby pictures or something like that, historical documents of something like that. Those are things that this should be in a one-stop shop where in your home, where you're gonna be able to, in a chaotic moment, grab and remember yeah. to grab that, right, yeah. as well. As well um, as medicine. Because I, I do remember hearing a lot of people. So. I was just saying there's a lot of people that were talking about that after these fires. That's what I heard a lot of. Yeah, that's I mean, that, like your, about, that they yeah, your, right, birth certificate, social security card, any kind of important insurance information that you may need, um, it, pills, if, you, if you're on prescription drugs. It's a good idea to keep some of them in some kind of a little bag or a little snap container or whatever, you know, just put them back for just in case, right? Because you still gotta have your medicine and stuff. So yeah, they definitely need to think about those kind of things. That's a very good point. Yeah. Should we move to our next one? Yeah, right before we do, I just want to share this because that's what I do. <laughs> we love it. Um, gives visuals at least for people. Um, yeah. Um, this, this is just, uh, it's called U.S. Preppers website. Let me move this. USPreppers.com. But they have it broke down in categories, categories that you can go in and look. And it's just wouldn't be a bad idea to review it once in a while. Yeah. And uh, just to get idea. It's like communicating. How do I communicate to my family if cell service goes down? You know, can, right. can we get walkie-talkies? Is there radios? Yeah. Is there right. ham radios? Like, plan. there's a lot of different options. Yeah, and have that the plans for where we're going to meet and things like that. I think it's really yep. important that everybody's. Yep. It could be as it's, simple as oh, there was a riot in our area or something happened. Where are we going to meet so that we don't get caught up in it or whatever? You know, to yes. to kind of stay out of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll go back to the home, but it just goes into everything here as far as planning too. Yeah. That's amazing because some people just aren't, you know, they they just don't know. They just don't know what to gather, right? And right. so this is just nice to gather that list, go off of it, um, do what you can, right? That's why as we get older and you mature more, right? you start to go, oh, I'm going to put some more realistic things together in a bag and you have more money to do it, right? So if you can't do it, like maybe this month you get like a, a, a radio, right? A little inexpensive radio that you can plug into your car. It's got that battery thing, right? You plug into your car and at least you could have that for a way of communication, right? Yeah. Since we are so connected to our phones and stuff like that, right? Yeah. You have the communication. And then next next month you do something different, something else to add to your your thing. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, that's just right. kind of a way I did it um, over mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah, and it's good to have contingency plans for all sorts of uh, disasters or emergencies, right? Like with 
my kids, I practice fire drills with them. I practice tornado drills. I tell them what to do, you know, should they be in place A and I'm in place B and what we're, what we're supposed to do to find each other, right? Like have your plans in place and go over them with your children, go over them with your, your people in your house, whether it's elderly or, you know, whoever. Um, make sure everybody understands the plans. Maybe even tape it on the wall somewhere, right? Put it on a piece of paper. Like it doesn't hurt to be prepared. It's a good idea. It's not a fear thing. It's it's called being responsible, right? How does that saying go? Plan. Expect the best. Plan for the worst. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Expect the best, but plan for the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just like Boy Scouts. Yeah, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be. Right. It it can be a fun thing. Like if you're doing it as far as a family, like go Mm -hmm. camping in your backyard with your your kids or something like that, and just get their comfort. You know, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Break them in a little bit. Kids actually get a fun bonding. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Agreed. Agreed. So you'd be amazed at how much children love doing outdoor activities with their parents. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they'd be all for it. Maybe some of them will still have to take their phone, but whatever. At least they're out there, right? Yep. And they can use the restroom if they want to and would come inside. They don't have right. to go. <laughs> right <laughs> they still get they still get that that luxury <laughs> right yeah if somebody falls in the mud they still get a shower and get cleaned up <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you don't have to just deal with it exactly yeah, yeah there character. was a lot of families sorry there was a lot of families around here that would do the projectors right oh, instead sorry. of on their home yeah, and then have everybody gathered around and, and do that. And that was Aww. a really fun thing. We did that in the hospital too. And it just makes movie night or whatever you want to do. You could even show pictures right from your phone, right? You can do like all kinds of stuff and you can throw, do it through the projector and, you know, have a really good time outside and bring it all, awesome. it's all outside, right? Yeah. So, yeah. They have tents where you can do the projector on the tent screen now, too, inside the tent while you're camping. <laughs> I know. What will they think of next? <laughs> yeah. They will. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. All right. So what are we moving on to next? More prep stuff? Um, we, were, we were... Well, um, I do have just really quick, I have the music frequency that heals. Remember, I, I didn't say it last week. I didn't have my cheat sheet. Yes. So I did prepare for it. Um, and so I, I will um, give it to Kelly and then we'll, we'll get it up there for you guys on YouTube. Okay. We'll just do a little quick thing, but um, 174 Hertz removes pain. 285 hertz influences energy 396 hertz liberates you of fear and guilt 417 hertz facilitates change 432 it's just like one of my favorites is the miracle tone of nature 528 repairs your dna right? Um, 639 heals relationships. 741 hurts, awakens your intuition. 850 963 you connect to light and spirit. Say that These are just you froze that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 963 hertz. You connect to light and spirit. 
Nice. So what these are, these, yeah, these are the, to basically amplify you in an experience to feel better, either in meditation, sleep, chill mode, you know, in the background while you're working, whatever it may be, right? But you just, I just wanted to throw that in there because these are through times that we're all going through. This is a very um, inexpensive way to put on yeah and 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 start healing yeah i love cheating forks i was just looking at mine because they all have little numbers on the side of them so i was trying to see what all of mine are but the majority of oh, my this was just for music kelly it wasn't but for tuning forks you it know it wasn't the tune <gasps> yeah what happened that's me you're sure. <laughs> so he's showing the color. Yeah. I should have warned you next time I'll warn you. <laughs> oh, perfect. You put it up there. Thank yeah, you. Just so they get a visual. Yes. Look at you doing all that. And they relate so to the chakras as well. So then you can yeah. take a picture of it, right? They can yeah. take a picture of it right here. Yep. Awesome. And oh, here's yeah. some hurts according to the chakras and what the chakra hurts are. Right. Now see, right. hold on. Don't you move that screen. Wait a minute. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. All right. Okay. Make I'm, sure they're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, I need to learn about this. I need to learn more about these tuning forks and these different hurts on my forks to see what they're good for, you know? Cause some of them sound like the month. I mean, when it's, going, um, it's like a really deep tone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what's fun about this adventure, right? Is, is to feel what is comfortable in these tones, right? There might be a tone that you've never heard of and all of a sudden you heard it and you just fell in love with it. Yeah. So. That's this another. one relates it to the zodiac chart as well. Yeah, I love that. Sign. Yeah, a... I like that too. Because it's cool. got everything put together. And it's got the Sanskrit symbolism in it too. And I love the mm -hmm. I love the Sanskrit symbols for the chakras. Yeah. I have elements on this all over the place. Oh, I like that too. Oh yeah, for the elements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. And that's the planets. Yay. Yeah, Good I love job. That's okay. That's all right. But Mostly because it took so long to find the stop share button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, warn me next time because I thought I'd have froze some shit up and we were gone. <laughs> I was like, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, um, my kids. Well, next we were going to what i was just gonna say my kids love playing these tuning forks they'll strike them on my crystal and they'll put them on both ears and like they just they'll just dance back and forth with the tuning forks go through every single one of them they just love all of them i think that's so cool <laughs> there's a little girl at the gym that i was trying to um help out why her mommy was um on the fight team and uh I actually won her with the tuning fork. <laughs> it, it worked. I just let her have it. And I was like, oh, look at the rock. You do this with it. And she actually just loved it. And um, yeah, we were a little bit, became friends. And yeah. I went through the tuning fork. <laughs> right. So yeah, I agree. It's like music. They just really like music. They're really interested in mm -hmm. instruments and all that stuff. Kids are awesome. Do your dogs, uh, does your dog like that, Garrett? Like, do you have a tuning fork? Yeah, I actually had one temporarily because I got it for my mom for Christmas. And I played with it a little bit and I would do it for him and he would just lay there. He was already usually laying down, yeah. but he would just kind of, he'd look at it funny, but then he'd just kind of fall into it. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to get a set of them. I'm actually looking for a set online right now too. And uh, some of them are color already color coordinated. Mm -hmm. coded to the chakras and some have the ball the bell things on them so they they resonate longer i think so if you're doing sound healing they can 
Because yeah. that's what I have. No, oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh They're yeah. Yeah. It sounds it sounds just like the monks in the cave going, oh it's so cool. <laughs> I love it. It kind of reminds me of, you know, yeah, I think if all you did uh, as a practitioner, <laughs> I was gonna say if all you did as a practitioner is played really good meditation music with someone on a massage table. Oh and yeah. Just did the tuning forks virtually and that like a drum they would get up and be like, oh my God, that felt good. And you really didn't even probably do Reiki yet. You know, you know what I mean? Just the, right. the flow of that energy is so good. Yeah. 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 I love the, I it's love so the fun. vibration. You, I mean, you really can feel it. I think it's so cool. It's trippy, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so is the, so are the singing bowls too. I love the singing bowls of putting them in my hand and letting the kids do it too. Or even elderly, they they think it's kind of cool to write, and um, that's just something that and that clears energy too as well, right? right. Just connecting with. The uh oh, she froze up again. Uh -huh. You're okay. Hello. Is it me or no? No, I think it's her. Her energy's a little big. <laughs> <It's okay>. <laughs> 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 Those earrings are getting some rotations going. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's getting the vortex going. Yeah. Boric <laughs> rotation the going. Cones are going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Bella, what I was gonna I was Bella does my little tiny singing bowl. She's she thinks she's like a master at it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. There, what was I going to say to that? There was a um, speaking of like the vibration and stuff, right? And 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 trying to make yourself feel better. Um, I was at physical therapy with my daughter the other day, and there was this <laughs> sweet little old lady, and her husband was just spunkier than a son of a gun, right? And he had took off and she found this chair and this chair kind of looks like a throne. Mm. And she sat herself in there and she was like, <laughs> just, she was, she, she made her bed. She was going to stay there for a while. Right. And <laughs> we finished up with our therapist and he was walking up and he's like, Hey, it's time to get up and, and go. Right. And she's <laughs> not happening. Nope. Right. And I look over at her and, and he said, well, you look like a queen. And she said, yeah, she was just going to stay there. I said, well, you know, queens actually still work out and kick butt too, right? They got to, they got to do that. She's like, all right. So she got <laughs> up and started to move and go over there and do her thing. Right. And that's what I wanted to say too, is like, if you could just, you know, smile, help somebody when somebody can't reach something like I'm kind of short I'm always asking people at the grocery store big tall right. guys like hey could you grab that for me please and I just I, I I would normally back in the day would have been kind of shy to do that but I really like to have that product so <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and ask right <laughs> nicely and I will get it if I can't jump on a shelf and reach it grab it down yeah. but um <laughs> You know, you you wanna you wanna you wanna do some some uh, nice kindness acts, right? And Garrett Garrett had put us on a challenge yeah. last week, and uh, I hope that everybody achieved um, their their goals of of being kind to you know the, the random acts of kindness, you know. And I felt like I really really killed it this week doing it. I I took that. Um, to the fullest and I was really excited to um, share this with you guys today from that to you know um, we were at a different store getting some crafts and I ended up talking with this lady and she she got to like feel my daughter's arm and she ended up getting my card and we're gonna probably end up doing some crafts and that was super fun 
And it, it was just like one thing after another. Even today, I was at the grocery store and guys, I've done this many times and usually it happens more during the holidays because of chaos, right? It happens to all of us. And you walk into a store, you park your car, you go in and then you come back out and there's like a whole bunch more cars than there were before in the parking lot. So now you can't remember where you parked. So you're walking up and down trying to remember, right? And you don't want people to think that you don't know where you parked. So you're trying to keep it together. Um, <laughs> right. right. Well, but that doesn't always work when you came out the other exit yeah. <laughs> of, of a building, right? So um, I, I pull up today and sure as heck, I see this lady and she's got that same face that I have. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I tell she was lost and I, and I, and I'm listening, right? There was a guidance inside that said, go up to her and please go help her. So I, I walked over there and I, and I um, kindly put my hand on her to like not scare her, right? Like I'm a taker or something. I said, hey, I can see that you look a little lost. Can I help you find your car? And she didn't want to admit to it, but I, I said, I'm just going to stand here. I'm not leaving. And, and you just go ahead and like, do what you just said, Garrett, use your beeper <laughs> and see. And we had been walking a little bit down another aisle and she ended up, we saw her car. She was good to go. Right. And she did say, thank you because it, it is moral support. I've called my daughter. I've called my husband and they're like, babe, mom, calm down. Just don't freak out. Right. Cause you just want, you're tired. You want to go home. You don't want to be lost in a parking lot. That's the last thing in the world you want to be done. So I just, I want to tell you, don't be afraid to ask for help, right? But it makes sure that you're using your guidance as well. So you're not talking to somebody that you shouldn't be either, right? Right. But um, yeah, like just, just, just go out on a limb, right? And then, um, oh, this was really fun. I was reading my book as I was at physical therapy too. And I really am, um, I press this really hard. I've been pressing it for a while. I'm not okay having a temperature uh, with radiation um, thermometer scanning against my forehead. I do not like it. I have rights and you do not get allowed to just all of a sudden stand and go whoosh, like you got some freaking laser gun from Star Wars, right? It's not happening. So I had to pump the brakes on that one for a while. And I told them, hey guys, guess what? We can get the temperature just as well on our wrist. Please do that. And so um, they do it to us, but I saw and I was sitting reading my book and I heard, and this lady is now checking in everybody with her wrist, with their wrists. So that was a really awesome aha moment for me to yeah. know that uh, nobody's getting zapped in the forehead right now. Right. That's a perfect example yeah. of how one person can be such a big change. I had an experience as far as recognizing that the shift is changing as far as we might be moving into more awareness as a collective, you know, um, I was, I was at the gym and I saw a commercial and it was just a commercial about a physical therapist and the title was master physical therapist. But to me, that was combining like the spiritual world with the physical 3d medical world, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. the idea that they're catching on to the idea of being a master at a certain thing, I don't know. It was just, it was a cool balance where maybe the earth is just realigning and balancing you know, right. so it was just an indication from the first for me that, hey, things are, are in a good progressive spot, you know, yeah. that it's transitioning to what that means. Yeah. Right. I actually have noticed a couple of people that I watch on YouTube have made like a transition. Um, for example, there's a tarot reader that I follow that used to only post once once a month. And now she's posting every single day. Well, she was actually a respiratory therapist and she quit her job. She quit her job. And now she only does that tarot. That's her bread and butter now because of standing up for her principles and her beliefs. That's huge, right? 
I mean, that's really, that's a big statement. And that was very brave of her to do. And then there's uh, the real BP Earthwatch, who I think we even brought up early in the show. Uh, normally he shares sky events. And the other day he shared um, how to clear your energy. And I was like, oh my God, I am so honored to bear witness to this shit. Like, it's so beautiful. I And here's the funny thing. 10, 15 years ago, when I first started seeing holistic products on the shelves at Walmart, I was pretty yeah. awe, awe-inspired at that moment, right? I was like, oh my God, look, that that's proof right there because consumer and demand, right? Mm-hmm. It's showing the, the shift because you're seeing it on the shelves. But to see it playing out in all of our different areas where the truthers are and uh, where the professionals are, you know, the doctors and such, to see that transition happening is such a beautiful, exciting, hopeful thing, right? I mean, don't you just feel about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited because I'm telling you, I'm just telling you, I'll be, I'll be real. I'm not a big fan of the mask, so I don't wear the mask. I call it a face Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and Julia knows (laughs) and her boyfriend knows and like a lot of people know about that, but I, I go everywhere and, um, I've only been kicked out of one store. I wasn't allowed to go into one store, but Me too. people that are wearing masks don't get mad at me and I don't get mad at them. I smile okay. at them. Yeah. We still touch hands. We yeah. are still okay. Be, you, you know, so I feel there's a barrier breaking down right now, even in that, that we're not being so divided anymore. We're still seeing we're, we're, having new eyes to view with right to look at each other even if they have a mask we can still see what's going on right yeah and yeah so i just appreciate that i i appreciate that i do too because you really can see a transition in that alone from where we started when covid first began and people's mentality and the way they would treat each other versus now I mean, you can see a big difference in it. I mean, I, I've not worn a mask since day one. I actually turned down a job because the day after I was hired, the mask mandate happened in Indiana. And I said, well, I'm not taking this. I don't care how great you want to pay me. I'm not taking it. I'm not wearing a face diaper. I'm not doing it. It's ridiculous. It's not going to help my health. It's not going to help your health. I'm not going to do it. I'm not conforming. But um, several times since then, when I would go into that same uh, business without my face diaper. Um, other people would be in there that had theirs on and they wouldn't recognize each other until they heard their voice. And then they would tap them on the shoulder and speak to them and be like, well, I didn't recognize you because of blah, blah, blah. And so there were multiple times I got on my soapbox right out in public <laughs> and started protesting like Martin Luther King about some stuff except you know different different stuff but yeah I, I seriously I was like I, I had a crowd of people around me multiple times when this first started because I'm out there on my soapbox preaching <laughs> and they were listening but they were still wearing their face diapers you know and now they're not you would the last Right now, you would not know that COVID ever happened here. Nobody wears them. Nobody. Business as usual. Well, I like to say, we the last time I checked, we do live in the United States of America. And That's what we I'm do about. have the, the 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 privilege to have free speech, and so I. Uh, yeah, I and it's my that. body, <laughs> my body, my rights. Right. That's your constitutional right. Yeah, so was me being on my soapbox. I was exercising my constitutional right for public display <laughs> of tyranny. <Exactly. laughs> what did you have, Garrett? 
Yeah. Well, I have this. Um, this is American frontline doctors. Some um, of, I go support Iowans for freedom. So we go to rallies at the Capitol and things like that. So they're yeah. standing up, not against vaccines or anything like that. It's just the right to choose for ourselves what yes. we want to do. Yes. And uh, so it's tied directly into the Nuremberg Code. And they've been doing a lot of lawsuits and filing and kind of tr trading. New people are getting hired or not hired, but voted into these new positions. So it's kind of time for leaders to step up into that to help that transition. Yes. And we're the only ones that are going to do it. Nobody's going to do it. Like, I love Trump to death, but he, we have to choose it and go and put our energy in it. So, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. There was a, you know, I was, I was hearing like, you know, go, if we got like a hundred people and we're able to serve for one topic, right? Mm -hmm. You, you will win. You will win. That's what, that's what we have to do. It takes a hundred of us collectiveness in one state to go and put ourselves together and sue for whatever, you know, whatever you're angry about that happened during this time, right? Doing with your rights or anything like that. And you can do that. And that's how we start. That's how we start uh, changing our systems out there. Right? Absolutely. All right, guys. We've I don't think it would be too hard if you were go. <laughs> I was just saying we shouldn't be that hard to yeah. do that with your neighbors and stuff, right? Right. Not that hard. Absolutely. And if you look, each state probably has a, a coalition or some group like Iowans for Freedom or Patriots for your state or something. Yeah. And if you're curious and want to get involved or just find out what is available in your state, you know, yeah. go connect to some something it's either going to be for you or it's not and trust how you feel with it if it resonates with you and you yeah. want to support it by all means do yeah the more of us that do the the quicker some of this can process while the light workers are in the back holding energy right <laughs> yeah agreed yeah agreed yeah. or doing multiple jobs <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> juggling, so to speak. Um, so we've been at this right at about an hour. Um, this would probably be a good place to wrap this up and close it out. Would either of you like to add any parting words or um, touch on something of one of the topics, you know, that maybe you wanted to squeeze in earlier, didn't have an opportunity to? Garrett, we'll start with you. A variety of topics and some can be scary or not scary or whatever that um that is so definitely think about like how can i stay in a good mood how, how can i bring joy to myself what are these fun things activities we can do while all this chaos is going on and just kind of imagine it like it is a movie playing outside here yes it can be real and it can be scary and yes i need to be cautious and prepare for it but just know and have the sanctity of your own home for your family, you know, and be present for each other, be present for your community and just, just be that light in your community. That's the best we can do. I think at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And why not empower ourselves rather than be fearful of the what ifs, right? If you're prepared, you're empowered. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda. Um, so I just wanted to bring back the, we, we, we touched lightly, but the balance, just yes. make sure that you're really, really balancing yourself. Right. Um, so I have a, I have a fun word that I like to say, so it's pragmatic, right. And dealing with things in a sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical rather than a theatrical consideration, which we can all see there's a lot of theatrical stuff going on right now. So let's try to be a little bit more pragmatic, but also many people work very hard at things that they do for fun. So remember that, right? 
And that's part of that balance, being pragmatic and then being like the dreamer, right? And like the lover, the lighter, right? But being pragmatic, yeah. you know, there's fires, there's shit that's going on. So so be be ready for all that stuff, but but have that balance, right? Yeah. And I am safe and the universe loves and supports me. That's one of the things that I like to say. So that can right. me keep me balanced. That's very good. I like that a lot. And also with your balance and being pragmatic, but also, you know, having that fun, even in the, um, the act of doing your storage for your, your preparations, you know, for just in case something happens, make that fun, add some fun stuff to it. You know, if you like jelly beans, put a bag of jelly beans in there with that stuff, right? Who says that just because you're without everything else, you can't still have your, your little indulgence, you know, make it fun. Put some crossword puzzles in there, whatever. Whatever it is for you that would bring you joy in that moment and help bring you back into a calmness, right? Because we all need to be able to ground after an event like that happens. And I want to remind everyone to remember to just breathe. Breath is everything. It, it, even if the whole world seems to be going to hell in a handbasket, pause and breathe it'll help clear your mind and then you'll know better what to do moving forward right and if anybody has any questions put them in the comments go to the website hit us up in the forum we love talking if you can't tell <laughs> so until next time be well and be blessed bye guys bye guys bye